You got a piece of paper? Oh, you got it? Oh. Mike, where is Debbie going? She grabbed something real quick. Or not so quick. <laughs> some might call it cold, and some might call it karma. Mike serves Natalie with divorce papers on national TV. You could have done this privately. Debbie, you say that, but I personally think it coming from Mama Debbie is probably a lot nicer than a sheriff coming and knocking on her door. Divorce papers coming from Mama Debbie on national TV is better than a sheriff knocking on her door privately? I beg to differ. Yeah. This episode wasn't just rough for Natalie. Mike's jaw-dropping move also had the elders in the room going at it. I don't want to talk to you. You're, you're pathetic. Then get my name out of your mouth, woman. Get your face out of my See? look. Ooh. Her face out of your what, Mama Debbie? My yeah, it got vicious. And I did end up picking a side. Were you team Miss Debbie or Mama Debbie? Let me know. Hey, 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. I hope you are doing well. Woo! Part five of the single life tell-all was one heck of a finale. Veronica's ex Jamal and Tim's ex Louisa, I guess they had no problem with us knowing that they hooked up. Because as they left the tell-all, with the camera right there, they said this. I'm going to sleep. You're going to sleep? Are you going to sleep with me? Can I? Yeah. OK, y'all, go ahead. Head off into the sunset. But unfortunately, Veronica still doesn't know anything about this. If I end up seeing Jamal tonight, depending on how things go, I mean, that could probably hold me over for a little bit. If we're around and we're single and we want to hang out and hook up, we can hang out and hook up. Uh, yeah. On a lighter note, Chantel gives a little twerk class. Oh, first okay. of all, okay. Okay. he said, hands on your knees, one and two. I feel like a pervert, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna look. One, two, three, four, left one. And look at him looking. <laughs> it's okay, Tyree. Just don't get too excited. Here. What do you do with your right hands? Now, on your knees. And you lift it up, up. and drop it down. Yeah, put down. Yeah, okay, five, six, seven, eight. One, yes! 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 It's nice to see Chantel happy and smiling. Speaking of that, Miss Debbie's son Julian might have a chance at adding to her happiness one day. Yep, Chantel revealed who out of the single 90 day cast members she would date. Debbie's son. Ooh. Ooh. Debbie's son, because he's a cop. Too That's bad. a he respectful uh, profession and he, he lives in Atlanta. Lives in Atlanta. You're such a princess and Julian likes the princess type. So I could make that happen, Shannon. <laughs> Get on it, Miss Debbie. <laughs> I would love to see Julian's reaction after hearing that. Oh my God! Can you see Chantel and Julian as a couple? Based on how he treats his mom, it seems like he'll treat her well and prioritize her. Natalie probably needs somebody like Julian too. After enough heartbreak, you get to a point where you realize you don't need the flashiest or most attractive man in the room. You need someone who is gonna treat you like a queen and add to your peace. By the way, I'm not saying that Julian isn't attractive. He is. He just doesn't seem like the type of guy who is so into himself. Who would you be interested in to go out on a date with? <laughs> probably Larissa. Y'all, Tyree is talking about he wants to date Larissa. <laughs> At this point, I don't even know Tyree's type. And I don't know if he's looking for a real relationship or just a good time. Bro, you want to be dead? Larissa, like Larissa back then or Larissa now? Both. <laughs> I like a little bit of crazy. I guess so, buddy. <laughs> you say that now. Have you ever had a crazy, Tyree? How do you know you like crazy? Uh-uh, Catfish Carmella has gotten him used to dysfunction. So much so that now he wants it. I love Tyree, but I'm starting to think he's just going with what he thinks sounds cool. Fast forward, the Debbie Downer moment, pun intended, comes when Mike joins Natalie and Josh on stage. First, he tells everyone he's moved on to a new relationship. How long has this been going on, Mike? We've been talking for a year and dating for six months. He then asks Colt's mom, Debbie, to do him a favor. Have you started the divorce process? I, uh, yeah, I have. 
what have you done so far? Well, you get a piece of paper? No one thought to put the paper in the seat next to Mama Debbie. Mike, where is Debbie going? She grabbed something real quick. She's grabbing something real quick? Mm -mm. It's that secrecy right there that turned this into a really petty move from Mike, in my opinion. Wait, OK, wait, hold up. You came to divorce me. Are you joking, really? Eventually, Mama Debbie makes her way to Natalie and hands her the divorce papers, then proceeds to whisper this in her ear. I'm so sorry. Mike, why did you give those papers to Debbie? Because I needed someone to serve her. You could not hand them Can't to her Can't serve her myself, no. Natalie pulls herself together and tries to sign the papers, but everyone tells her to stop and take some time to properly look them over. But you have to sign in front of a legal notary that can verify that it's actually you signing and we don't have a notary here. So if you sign them, it'll be invalid. While all of this is happening... I'm sorry, Natalie, I really am. Miss Debbie is over there in her seat, heated, in that red and orange. That was a Judas move, man. Oh, man. <sighs> Natalie has been going through it, but I think this is good for her. Hard, yes, but good. It's gonna be okay, Natalie. No, don't. Deep breathe. You're taking control of your life now. Yeah, she has the potential to grow so much from everything she's experienced this season. Sometimes you have to get to this rock bottom place. I call it fed up, tired, to become motivated to actually change. And when I say change, I don't even mean taking on something new. It's more of a letting go. Letting go of trying to prove our worth, letting go of trying to control the timing of major life events, letting go of trying to control people, surrender. Surrendering over and over again changes you into a new person. You could have done this privately. Debbie, you say that, but I personally think it coming from Mama Debbie is probably a lot nicer than a sheriff coming and knocking on her door. No, I'm saying that this is cruel for Mike to wait to this moment on TV to serve her after she's been traumatized by this guy she slept with last night. <laughs> oh no, Josh. Yeah, it's funny to you, but look at her. You know, she's really shook up. I agree with Miss Debbie. This is like kicking someone when they're down. I understand that Natalie has hurt Mike a lot, but one of the reasons why I've always liked Mike is because he wouldn't stoop down to her level. He always at least tried to be the bigger person. No pun intended. The move was beneath him, in my opinion. This has been coming for years. Like, it's not cruel on my part. You know, you shouldn't have done this on national TV, man. You just shouldn't have. We got married that on was national a low TV. Blow. I'm just, I'm just being yeah, honest. Marriage is I'm a happy event. Honest. Look at her. Does she look I'm very happy? Honest. I'm just being Don't honest. Don't pick on this Mike. Time. This is unkind. Don't pick on me. And you're a Mike. Judas, man. Miss Debbie is out here fighting for the people. Why didn't you ask the stranger? Somebody from the crew here. Craft to me, lady. The better some stranger walks in here and hands her the papers, at least she knows I care about her. She know I do. What do y'all think? Are you team Miss Debbie or Mama Debbie when it comes to this? Personally, I don't think Mama Debbie thought this through. If someone who claims they are my friend pulled a Mama Debbie on me, my first question when we get in private would be, why didn't you give me a heads up? It makes good TV, but if you want to talk about something being done in a kind way for someone you care about, this was not it. It was embarrassing. I would think a friend wouldn't want anything to do with that. That's cruelty. Look at her. Does she look She's any my kind? friend, and she knows I didn't do it. anything. I'm sorry, That's Natalie. Her you problem. know I love She's you, got and I'm giving my friends. best friends. Did she say best friends? Give her my best friends. Yeah, to the no, to the no, no, no. Oh, Mama Debbie, that didn't look very damn motherly to me. You're a f bitch. Ooh. You're you welcome. Are. Okay. Ms. Debbie, clown of the century. Thank you. Meanwhile, Natalie is contemplating life. Mama Debbie, I'm, I'm interested. What conversation did Mike have with you? about the papers? He just uh, asked if someone wanted to serve Natalie, and I felt that it would be 
better for me because we're friends. And I know if I was getting served by somebody, it would be somebody'd walk in a stranger. It's, it's just yeah, you don't so, make the laws, Debbie. Yeah, we, none of us do. There is no law that said Mama Debbie had to hand her those papers. That's what we're talking about here, Tim. Mama Debbie, why are you crying? Because she feels bad. I just told what Natalie be mad at me for doing that. Oh. Are you mad at her, Natalie? No, for what? She might not be mad, but she'll never forget it. I bet that. Michael's on to apologize to Mama Debbie for putting her in the middle of this, and Josh attempts to make her feel better. As much as I dislike you, I think that was really good what you did. And I, I actually, I, I'm glad that you did that. And, you know, I think it was caring for you to actually give those to her. Well, thank so. you. Yeah. She might have had good intentions, but like I said, I don't think she thought it through. Things wrap up on stage with Debbie going to hug Natalie. Oh, God. I'm Please, sorry. Debbie. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bye. And the single ladies encouraging one another and making future plans. Single life, yeah. girls. Yes. <laughs> Have you oh, my sorry. Sorry. Single life. <laughs> to single life. Woo! We're gonna get you divorced and then we're gonna celebrate. Shout out to Chantel. She's been through a divorce. She knows how it feels for someone to serve you papers. And she's using the strength that she's gained from her experience to encourage and uplift Natalie. That's dope. So we should go to Italy, the oh three of us. Yeah. Let's go to Italy. Yeah. I mean, I got well, the we have to sign these papers first and get yeah. you the course. Fast forward in the green room, there's a little bit of mean girl energy going on. You can't sit with us at lunch. How are you, my buddy? <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. I, I thought it was definitely kind, a very big kindness. Yeah, of and I would it's, rather be served by somebody, some, some stranger. It sucks, but yeah, yeah better yeah. you than some sheriff come knocking at your I door. Know. Chantel, you look absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. If you want to tweak or twerk or whatever they call it, <laughs> tweak. Anyway, anywhere you want, you do it, girl, because Aww. you're young and you have a right to be have fun. Clearly, that was Mama Debbie taking a shot at Miss Debbie, who called Chantel out for broadcasting that she wasn't wearing panties in Greece. Debbie had a lot to say about my outfits, actually. Um, <laughs> so that really means a lot to me. Yeah, she absolutely. Just didn't like the fact that I wasn't wearing any panties. Miss Debbie's commenting on your outfit. <gasps> really? Yeah. The clothing expert from hell. That's nasty behavior. It's uncalled for. Ugh. You know, you're very insulting. So you have to lie about your age to get a date, huh? Well, you know, go ahead, have at it. I'm just saying what you have said on your interview. Have at it. I'm thankful that I'm 68 and I have good health and I'm helping other people. I don't know what you're doing with your life, but I feel fine about oh, what yeah, I'm doing right, with yeah. my life. Debbie actually has helped me a lot. This whole year, all that Jamal drama, she's the one who, when I didn't want to annoy Tim, I'd text Mama Debbie, I'd send her an email, I'd give her a call. Veronica. <laughs> Veronica. After they go back and forth about the Natalie situation on stage, they start to get vicious with their words, especially Mama Debbie. I don't want to talk to you. You're you're pathetic. Well, you know, I you're saw how you acted in your son's personal affairs, and no wonder they wanted you out of the house. You're very destructive and demanding. Don't you woman. dare talk about my family. You have no right to talk about my family. Then get my name out of your mouth, woman. Get your face out of my See? look. Who resorts to yeah, trash? Yeah, I Right, right, oh, you're so privileged. Here we go. You defined yourself. Yes, Miss Debbie. I'm not gonna lie, I admire how she can argue without getting vulgar. Meanwhile, it seems like Mama Debbie is just trying to be hurtful. Here's a 68 year old woman thinking that a 23 year old man's madly in love with her and he's gonna, she's gonna, oh, he's gonna offer her the world. World. Well, I love you, Miss Debbie. I love you. And you've made How all you? perfect, wonderful decisions in your whole life. I'm I a happy camper lady. I, I don't know your I problem. I understand you, but I'd rather lie 10 years off my age than be a mean spirited person. Yeah, after that statement, this shot isn't doing Mama Debbie much justice. 
a litany of criticism directed at me. Do you ever shut up and listen? No, I don't think so. See, and now I'm being told to shut up. I pity you. Don't pity me. I'm happy. I get laid all the time. This is her man, for those of you who don't know. That's your intellectual stimulation is getting laid sex. all you the time. You're damn right. <laughs> Why are you looking for a man and if you're not looking for sex? Well, what your you mind do? is in the gutter, honey. What, Mama Debbie? <laughs> there are a number of things you can do with your partner than just have sex. <sighs> These are two different types of women. Better yet, two different types of human beings. They just operate in completely different ways. Veronica helps them to find common ground by pointing out the love they have for their sons. We can all be on an island united in that. Right, that's true. We love our children. We love our children. But I believe in respecting other people. And then Debbie makes one of the best exits that she could possibly make. Well. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I'm going to miss you, Tyler. Yeah, I miss you but too. But we're going to see each other again. Yeah, have a safe flight. Pick it up your ass. <laughs> Maybe I'll pick it up. But I was concerned for a second that I was about to take like a feather to the eyeball, but. I love how unbothered Miss Debbie actually is. <laughs> Regardless of how you feel about her, that's admirable. As a matter of fact, this week, when it comes to negativity, let's channel Miss Debbie and her fan energy. Pick it up your ass. <laughs> All right, 90 Day Fans fam, that is a wrap for season four of The Single Life, which was entertaining. Stressful for Natalie, but a solid season. I'm curious to see what new Single Life cast members they're gonna have next season, if any. Either way, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.